Welcome to Airbnb Success. My name is Trang Nguyen. If you are looking to make money within a day or an hour through listing out your space, or if you're looking to double your income through rentings, then you are coming to the right place. Today, we are going to talk about part one of model one, how to prepare your space, how to create a an amazing space that will attract your guests to instantly booking your place. The first thing is research the hosting potential in your area. First, you got to looking at the market research in your area. Do a bit of Airbnb, looking through the whole site and checking in your area to see what available around. Is there a demand in your area? Is there a lot of people booking in your area? The Airbnb listing available in your city. So let's say I live in London. Before I put my listing up, I'm go into Airbnb and put London and then click search. Then there's a whole list of all the places available for rent appear and depend on which particular street or area I wanted to go to, let's say London I, then I will look more into how many places rent around London eyes and what kind of price and what is it available out there, what kind of quality is how what kind of horse are they make an estimate monthly income. We will look into a video of doing that in practice later. So you're looking through five to 10 listings, or maybe, it might be even more than that, and it's better. And then looking at your old place and then estimate how much monthly income you could make from it and how much all the horse is making from it of course, different place with um, either is a studio, apartment, or one bedroom flat, one bedroom house, five bedroom house. This will be a different price, and is it they can charge more? And if their place it look as nice as Grand Palace or the Queen House, then it's obviously they can charge more than the normal everyday common no, living place. And then check out the places in detail, such as location, general price, review, view the calendar, real price, photos, descriptions, amenity, etc. etc. All of those, um, got, you got to look into detail. Of course, it will take a bit of time to look through 5 to 10 profile, 5 to 10 listings. But then by the time you get to up to six to seven listing, you have a roughly idea of what the price you can get for your place and what the um, description you should put in your listings. Within research hosting potential, you got to go to airbnb.com, get searching, pick out one guest, one night, three months, from now for the place close by, similar to your place. And I did say earlier that you got to check out the top one to five hosts or one to five listings in the hotspot area. For example, let's say you live in Florida and you don't actually live close by Disneyland, but you live a bit further between Florida and Miami, or you live in a small town, let's say a small town called Autumn Springs. Even though I say it's small, but it's not actually a city. You got to put in Autumn Spring how many days you got to check in, and, and you're looking at the calendar to see which day particular. So when you search for it, you can see around the area how many listings available that's similar to your place, right? The listing that's not similar to your place, it doesn't really relevant much, but if there wasn't many listing in your place, which means there wasn't much demand or maybe there wasn't there isn't much um, supply for it 
don't, don't worry if there is lots listing in your area. Don't start panicking and thinking that, oh, there's so many, I can't really compete with them. No way. There's a lot of guests out there, a lot of people traveling nowadays, and they have different preferences, different demand, different thinking. So if you can't get this guest, you can get another guest anyway. And there is always abundant out there if you keep thinking about that. All right. Then you got to understand your city area, the population, the your location, and the attraction around the area, the popularity, public transports, and extensions. When you look into research those listing, you're going to start seeing what people start suggesting to the guests on their listings, on what around the area, any famous local wide. I via uh, any famous attraction. I believe in London, and of course, a lot of people go into London because we have uh, the Big Bang, the London Eyes, Covent Garden, Chinatown, and the South Bank, uh, Borough Market. Loads, lot to go to and to do. Um, when you start looking around your area, and then check out Google Maps as well. Go go to google.co.uk slash maps. So on Google Map, they have a lot of good suggestions for what availability out there in your area. And sometimes you don't even know it, even though you live there a long time, until you look into Google and then it's pointed out to you, oh, it's actually only 10 kilometers from your house. There is a very special place that a lot of local people go to. But you have no idea that it's actually exit. Your task is to go to airbnb.com and choosing one example of your city. Uh, I'm living in London town wealth area, so I'm going to go ahead and do a, um, a quick real example video for you about that. And then I'm going to look into the Google map and point it out what available in the area so you can see me in practice and then you can go ahead and do that yourself to create eight amazing space in your house before you start listing it and taking photo and do everything you got to prepare your house so this session we're going to cover everything you need to know to properly prepare your house for your guest arrival is identify the items that should be removed the list of affluence that your guests might need and describe how to create a comfortable sleeping arrangement and etc. So the first is room versus house spaces. Okay, some of you thinking my space is not really good enough. Okay, stop. That is not right. It just um, haven't been prepared enough. That's all. Because what you need to do is almost all place are good enough depend on how you place it how you space it and how you uh, would like to rent it out so some people like to rent room by room some people like to rent the whole spaces imagine you have a guest come to a new city so what would you like to have would you like a lot of interaction with your host or would you just like to have a place to lay down overnight, nice, clean, and then the next day disappear and then come back to sleep without any interaction with anyone? Then you have different demand and different preferences, right? Has some talk about whether you want to be a host or just an owner of the place, okay? And has some talk about the environment in your home and what type of demand and supplies in your area and what kind of setup you would like to set for your guests. Either you want to just leave it on the same as what you're living at the moment or you would like to improve it a bit, changing it and make it look more presentable, uh, less clustery because some people would like to rent pack up the place, just the room, which means they will have more interaction with the guests. So depending on what kind of experience you want for yourself, you want to talk to the guests and see them 
daily and create a good connection relationship with them or you just you know only like to check guests in and go about doing your day uh, work your um your job and check the get out meet, meeting the guests on very limited time uh, some people they they run out the whole place and they go over to stay with their parents or the place available for them or uh, some people they consider to do both so they run out room when they're living there and they run out of the whole space uh, when they go on holiday so you have different options here and it's very very flexible with airbnb do consider if your space is private enough or at the living quarter too close together and um, what kind of experience you want with your guests i mean if you more extrovert you have a better time renting smaller spaces but if you are introvert then you got to start considering different options as well and do um, think about what available or what not available to your guests do the guests had a uh, ability to be social when they want and private when they want if they can't have the choice to be private in your space i mean that can be a problem because if you run out a pack of your place and they have to walk through the living room into the kitchen and you actually stay in part of the living room then yes that has to be a problem but so you don't really want that or if you have a, a open uh, plan kitchen and you somehow section the park of the living area so those guests actually have the ability to work to the kitchen without having to pass your living area all right um lack of privacy can lower the price you can rent your space for but it's not a deal breaker it's only change the cap you can charge the privacy is in the same issue with poor place rental but you have to consider then the privacy of your neighbors or the building tenants i mean just just imagine yourself as a guest when determining whether or not to list your space and part of the reason to make your space guest friendly is to decide what you want to the living area for guests to you and but not to leave it there and just keep it for yourself and how much interaction with your guests yes depend on your personality as well either you are an introvert or uh, with airbnb it's all work out it just you got to consider yourself before you start uh, looking to, to change your space and how would you like to prepare your space would you like to make it a top high quality or an average quality experience i mean if you live in an average quality then you keep down if you live in high top quality you can still keep down it's up to you or if you want to improve from average quality to higher quality then you know what the money will pay off later because guests they will pay higher price for the better look get a better look of the room the same with like you go to hotel right the cheaper price of the hotel you don't have that high spec things including the room like an extravagant lamp or a very soft comfy super mattress so it's just an average one still good enough though but if you 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 pay more let's say 200 pound a night for a, a one percent to high quality hotel in london and you do see the difference from table chairs how they lay out the place what they provide for you the marbled a bath or the marble sink or like a very very expensive beautiful chandelier in the room you know it's it's all reflecting different depend on what kind of experience you would like to give it out there and what um surprise you happy with and of course it's got to reflect on your area as well so we we talk about guests and your privacy so you do consider always put yourselves in the show of the guests 
um, when you look into changing your place. Also, the important is parking, transport, close by attraction, and distance from the central have um, also determined your price. In order to transform your space from a private living area to a guest-friendly unit, it actually takes some work involved, and there's a number of details you've got to attend to. Next one, we're looking at remove all your personal belongings. Anything valuable, anything that you normally just leave it uh, anywhere in your space, such as you go home and then you put your watch on the shelf, um, take your tie off, lay it on the chairs, all the things such as a private phone, home photo. I mean, those things are not that important, but anything that valuable, then a bit personal, then you got to remove them. That's the first thing because they are not useful for the guests. But if it's like you will run out the whole place and go holiday and there's a pictures of you and your family everywhere in the flat, then it, it'd be up to you if you just want to leave it there or if it, because those, those are not that um, important. Some guests, they like to see that, but some guests, they don't. So, of course, you put yourself in the the guest show to, to prepare your space, but also to consider about yourself what you like. If you actually live in the place, what you like uh, it to be. So it's kind of come yourself and your guests. If you don't live in the place, then yes, do remove all the anything belong to uh, you. There is no reason to have your personal belonging uh, laying around the places, you know. You probably don't want your guests to try on your favorite pajamas. And they don't want to see your toothbrush and a razor in the bathroom. All the items that you should try and store elsewhere, such as clothes, uh, personal toiletries, uh, razor, toothbrush, medication, etc. Um, your old computer, of course, shoe, jewelry, personal documents. There's, uh, of course, certain items that could be useful for your guests. Typically, if you can leave books and movies around in the living room, then some guests, they do like that when they um, have a long day out and they just want to relax in the evening watching a movie or reading um, some interesting books in your place that they're interested in or play a video game, read in the magazines. That would be a park as well. And um, in case you're wondering, I have never had a personal item stolen. So no worry about um, leaving your personal stuff outside. Um, although um, anything valuable, do take them away or store them in a private place. Buying necessary amenities also important because those things that your guests will need. I will provide you a checklist later uh, for what you need to buy and what is needed for the guests. Um, so check it out um, on the side. Here, what you're aiming at, a home away from home, okay? Um, the central goals of a five-star horse is to make the place feel familiar and comfortable. Some of my friends and I rented out an awesome apartment in the house of the city, and the location was incredible. The house was very kind, but the manager of what make it truly memorable stay. We have a fully stocked kitchen with amazing in-house laundry machine and loaded lining closet, two TVs with satellite and collection of video games and movies. It's, it's well pretty awesome to stay the last and it's well in France. You know, what did, why it feels so special? Because it's well the amazing little extras that make feel at ease. It's well the uh, the familiarity that seemed to transfer into an international water. As soon as they walk into the place, if the guests feel the way of calm wash over them, they instantly feel comfortable, right? And at, as a host, your goal is to regain that same feeling of familiarity to each and every one of your guests. Um, after hosting nearly 100 people at my place and 
uh, their requests and suggestions, I um, had assembled a com comprehensive list of all the basics that makes space truly welcome. You will get the checklist right later. You're welcome. <laughs> Even if you are only renting out a two-bedroom place, you might very well have four to five guests resides in your place as one. I mean, um, accordingly, I suggest having sufficient linen and bedding material for multiple guests. So if you run out just a room for one guest, then you should stock up at least two to three bed set. Um, and if you run out the whole place, depend on how many guests you allowed, um, you better stock up the double the amount of that um, in case the guests pull the wire over the bed and they, you know, telling you, oh, I need to change the bedding in the middle of the night and you're not there and they don't have any for them to change, then that's going to be the disaster bit. But it will be a plus pawn for you if you have something on the side uh, in the couple in storage and like, okay, please go there and pick it out and change for yourself. And tomorrow I come over and take it out for you. You know, that's that's be a plus plus. Bedrooms is provide a good, nice sleep place for your guests, right? So you better ensure it would happen because one of the most important components to providing a comfortable space in making sure that your place is ready to a good night rest. A uh, lumpy mattress, annoying sound, or noise, or uncomfortable linen can be sure of a way to a negative review. I told you, I tell you, I have that. I have all of that. Uh, there are some really simple and inexpensive things that you can do to make sure your guests have a deep and relaxing sleep at your home such as install traps and curtains that completely block out all the outside light, fit your bed with a soft, firm top, and provide different blankets for warm, cold nights, leave an eye mask and earplugs in the bed, play a small fan in the bedroom, all of that, all of that will make their day. Yeah, because um, you actually learn a lot from my mistake. I um, I have a place which um next to the train station. Bravo! It's so close to the train. Two minutes walk. You think it's good? <laughs> no, I mean in early morning and um, not early early, but from seven the train running from seven to twelve every day. So. You know, if any guests, the room that actually closer to the train station got a bit of noise problem. And the room facing the street got, also got noise problem. So um, I make sure that in my um, listings, in my description, I try it specifically that this room facing the street, this room facing the um, train, you know, so the guests aware that it is, but some of the guests, they don't read the listings, uh, they don't read the descriptions. So I also make sure that in the room, there is earplugs and um, eye mask for them, um, you know, so it's, it's all um, about going an extra mile to provide your guests a comfy stay. The next one will be your bathroom, cooler things, and your shower Attention. must happen. In your bathroom must be immaculate. That's if your place lies under. I have the same you of us won't be able to get up the is day. A luxury if hotel. Be able to make when is the last time you check into a five-star you know, hotel and you see your bathroom higher and higher? Don't even think of the quality of your bathroom. Higher and higher. Don't even think of your quality of your bathroom. Or the mold on the wall and between the tiles. Oh my God. Clean themselves having a moderately clean bathroom can ruin the entire site. Your toilet must be very scrooped in the best places. You know, when we free of in there and it took all off of your the clothes and the showering, you know, it is and it spent of a quality time in there without anything on your body. It's a very, very intimate space. People must feel secure and safe while using the bathroom facility. I mean, no hook, uh, no, no thing that look dangerous, picking out of the world. Uh, looking at um, or 
uh, even the, the bath mat need to be provided for, to avoid them slip uh, and fall and you know might injure themselves that's not be good at all so you better go an extra mile to make it good for your guests just like you expect it from a um, hotel you're going to stay if you implement the stretch and I have already list then you are on your way to a super review but if you want to strive for absolute excellence and true five-star caliber service you will have to go the extra mile if you up for the challenge here are a few uh, supercharged suggestions Okay, first provide a cell phone with a local SIM card. Uh, I'm not doing it myself, but I know there's a few guests who do that. And of course, they got a lot of uh, Bravo and Vive and Rice on their side. Second, offer discount coupon to tourist attraction, restaurant and bar. Um, third, leave a collection of menus for nearby restaurant. Um, fourth, give your guests access to bicycle right in london and i think in paris as well um they have um uh um city bike which are very very good and um is actually uh, been located in a lot of area which guests can um get within uh, their walking distance so that's a perk if you can point those out for them. Uh, provide public transport cars and offer an airport picking service. I was doing that at the beginning, provide an airport picking up service. Um, but then because um, there wasn't much demand and I had too much other things that um, revolve. So I stopped in that. But if you can you know, liaise with um, Someone you know, uh, yourself um, to offer an airport picking up service, then it's the guests will appreciate it very much. Um, of course, it's not going to be free. They got to pay you the same amount that they normally pay the um, they normally pay the taxi, right? Okay. Right. Not the main important things you got to do a pay. Um, the overall presentation of your place, um, paying attention to all the presentation. The top-notch service is not just about what is available, it's about how it is present. You've seen the show um, Top Chef, right? Why an excellent ingredient and perfect seasoning are uh, must. What separates the wheat from the uh, the best is presentation. It's all about the arrangement of the item, from the color, the symmetry, and the overall artistic flair. Just like competitive cooking, presentation is the key in the short style range of games as well. Here's a few quick tips on how to make your place look as prim and proper as the lavish result. Okay, first. Perfectly full towel with a bottle of shampoo and a soft packet on top. Um, second, a mint of chocolate on the back accomplished by a brief welcome note. For a six pack of beer in the fridge. Uh, fifth, an assortment of apple and orange in the decorative bowl on the kitchen table. That's going to give you a plus point in your guest's eyes. And not forget about making your house smell nice. This is the atmosphere you want to create for your guests. You will need to fill the air with an inviting aroma without overpowering the, the nose, of course. <laughs> this will not only make your guests feel at ease, but it will reinforce the idea that your place is extraordinarily clean. I recommend using a uh, neutral smell from the products with mass appeal. Um, I mean, why um, the smell of bleach and cleaning stuff make the gas feeling, ah, your place actually clean. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a, a, a very unpleasant smell, okay? If they're working in a smell a bit of, you know, 
countryside, a bit of vanilla, a bit of uh, you know lavender, and it remind them about the best time I ever they spent with their girlfriend, boyfriend, with their parents, with family. Uh, you immediately get um get the guess. Um, they immediately like you and your place. Just just have a first impression. That is the most important. So some example of terrific aromatic tools are Glade plugins. Um, you can get it a lot in every supermarket now. Uh, free breeze. Um, noticeable smell. Not the. I think they have the, the yes, they do have the uh, the general smell, just the normal one, and then they have different type of smell. Uh, do try out because sometimes you might not like particular smell like me. Um, and then just settle for once when you like it, uh, one of them. Um, or oh, Hampton Beach True Air, that's, that's a very nice one. Uh, or oh, Scented Candle. I mean, that, that's not very safe, Scented Candle. Uh, but it's always really a very pleasant smell compared to all the sprays and plug-in. Um, I believe that. Uh, but if you have children in the house, then don't do that, yeah? Um, so all the popular scents like chocolate apple, ooh, yummy, rose, uh, coconut, cookie, vanilla, of fresh laundry, lavender, lemon, sandalwood. These are the smell that um, dirt. Uh, don't get anything weird or funny smell. After you prepare all of that, remove your remote personal stuff, uh, provide all the necessary amenity, um, get the bedroom ready, the bathroom clean, uh, make the whole space presentable. Then now, it's gonna be the last step improving your house. I mean, when it's come to providing your guests with basic amenities, it should be astoundingly clear that this is a must. The basics are relatively low cost items that will be met with high level of appreciation by your guests. I mean, this is a minimal investment for loads of glowing review and potential of increasing your price later. But what's about her big ticket items? One of my friends asked me, if they should buy a um, 1,000 pound mattress or 3,000 um, pound TV, oh, sure, there would be nice addition. But you must view all of your uh, purchasing decision as an investment vehicle. When deciding whether or not to buy an expensive item, consider the incremental money you will be able to charge a guest. Right? Thinking about it this way, let's say you are considering buying a new mattress for your house. You cure and bet in reasonably, it's reasonably comfortable and slightly worn down. And the one that you have your eyes on is phenomenally plush and it's got 1,000 pounds. Should you buy it? Let's consider the number, okay? First off, how much do you think guests would be willing to pay for a substantially better mattress? One dollar more per day? Two dollar? I mean, pound. There is no direct answer to your question. So the best any host can do is implement logics and common sense. And based on what are you having at the moment, how much you're earning at the moment to invest in your place, right? Let's assume that's an expensive and comfortable bed could reasonably justify a price high of at least three pounds per night. Assuming your place is rented approximately 200 days per year, this new addition would yield about £1,200 after two years. A net profit of £200, you should buy the mattress, right? Not so fast, come on. Before you call up your local mattress retailer, you need to consider opportunity cost. For example, could you uh, hack the price and equivalent amount by surprising for top of the line? Uh, 100 form top? If so, you could earn a profit of 1,000 pounds in two years. For your convenience, I have um, 
making uh, I have made a quick list of all the main items that will boost your value in a cost-effective manner. A reasonably priced LCD TV would cost between £100 to £500. A very comfortable form top mattress would cost between £100 to £200. You can get slower than, than that, of course. There's a lot of um, a good ones available online, but because I haven't used them, I um, don't know about the quality yet. Um, in unit laundry machine, between, um, I don't know, depend on if you just want to wash or wash and dry machine, then it's, if it's wash and dry, it will be 500 to 700 pounds. Um, and reviewing your guest feedback, look at both your reviews and private message to see what situation you can raise. This is a highly valuable research uh, mechanism that at the disposal of every horse. So take advantage of it. I mean, you can um, even start at, you know, uh, a place that you have at the moment, tidy it up, make it ready, and spend only little to um, list your place. And then down the line, one to three months, as you see the profit, profit coming, then you start and you keep all the profit and start reinvest in your place if your mattress is not good enough and you get uh, gas um, complaint then you know take the profit and put it in to buy the new mattress because I'm sure you it will pay off later okay so how long this is going to take to prepare your space Surprisingly, less than you think. This is not a small project and it's also not a large project either. If you follow my course and you have access to a camera, uh, let's say your iPhone or your smartphone, you can do it in at least or as a day. But realistic, the more time you spend on it, the more successful you will be. If you want to do this well, it will take you a couple of days. Less if you fast, longer if you want to be slow and methodical and logical, you know, and have a lot of um, wandering around. I suggest following the tips in this course and launching with a higher quality space. Don't try to dip in your toe approach. It is, I mean, doesn't work particularly well on Airbnb. As I seen, um, some of my friends had done it. If you want a good reviews out of the gate, and if you don't fully commit, then you won't get a good guest experience. Um, if you get a bad review on your first day, oh my dear, this could be a game ender. It's hard to recover when you only have one review and it is bad, you know. I got a friend, and um, he um, he working full time in a job, and it's quite long hour. And he started um, renting out his um, place, but it just wasn't the place that should be rented out at all. It's dark, it's dirty, it's, I don't know what to say, it's, it's got to change. The whole thing had to change from the curtain to the wall color to, I mean, the wall drawer, how it's locked. It's just horrible. Uh, to the carpet uh -huh. and the kitchen um, is, is horrible. He just put it up and then, you know, he didn't get much uh, inquiry. And he gets stuck yet to booking, he's very excited of course. But, um, oh my dear, it's just disaster. Um, the guests staying there and they burn the pond and they start broken, broken things. And he, he doesn't get a very good guess because uh, the lower the price you have compared to um, the area uh, or, or rather listing your area, the uh, lower quality of guess you will get, okay? Um, and it's all reflect. Uh, the type of people you get will re uh, reflect on the place that you have. And eventually he, he making... Um, 
I mean, he didn't make a loss because he didn't actually spend much on it. Um, but it's it the booking wasn't worth the time that he had to run back or forward to check his gas in from work. Um, it wasn't worth spending time of it. It wasn't well for him to just spending time. Um, take it mind out of the work he he doing. Um, to replace gas, and they, they, he get a lot of flak of gas. All right, so you better get your place ready, uh, improving your place, um, and make it presentable nicely before you uh, list it on Airbnb. Okay, um, do take a look on my checklist. It will help you to determine uh, what you go need to go out to to buy. Um, and what you need to get. Okay, I see you in part two of Moodle One, which I will talk about um, how to write a great description with a attractive title and how to put everything in places after you have prepared your place and taking photo. Right, mm -hmm. see you next time. Bye bye.